Hi guys, I'd like to go through the uh, sizing methods uh, that I have outlined in the uh, outline uh, for the gas pipe sizing application. So first one I'd like to start with is called the longest length uh, method. And a little bit about this particular method, the longest length method was probably the original method that was used by most application people uh, in our field. And this particular method is what I would consider as a very conservative approach where we size all the branches, um, the main, the branches, everything using the longest length of the piping section of a path of delivery from the point of delivery. So it's, a, it's essentially assuming that even the short runs, we're gonna use that longest length um, for this application. So that's kind of the, a little bit of the assumption. Um, there is a, a little bit of a longer and maybe a more detailed method um, that's shown in the code book uh, under Annex B, specifically B.4.1, if anybody uh, wants to use that or look at that as a reference. So it's good, uh, code book's really good on that. So let me, uh, let me outline a little bit of um, the kind of the mini or the shortened version of this. So first thing that we always do is you always start from the point of delivery. So I'm going to pull up my typical install and I've got a few notes that I already made in this one. And specifically, we're going to look at the point of delivery, which in this case happens to be my gas meter, you know, which of course this is my regulator. So it's really technically everything from down here all the way into the system, all the way there. So when I look at my piping system, it seems fairly obvious by the picture, um, disregarding any lengths or anything like that, that my application, of course, would have my longest run, which would run this whole length. And let's say we go to the very last one. And I'll call this one my longest run. So let's just say that happens to be from the whole distance of this branch plus the main, let's say that that run happens to be um, 76 uh, feet in total. And so if we take a look at that, that's one of the things that I'll need to do is to identify that. So let me go back to that outline. So first thing it said, you know, obviously always use the longest branch for all the calculations. So in this case, you know, I'll figure out um, my total BTUs. So let me go back to that picture. So the total BTUs of the total volume of fuel that I need to do this with is essentially going to be, um, since I'm going to use the basic 1,000 that I've outlined here, um, 1,000 BTUs per cubic foot. And each one of these, I figured out the volume, uh, in this case, of 50 cubic feet, 100 cubic feet, another 50 here, and another 50 here. So in this particular application, that pretty much tells me that I'm going to have uh, 100, 150, 200, 250 uh, for these particular four appliances. So that means that I'm going to be having to move through this system 250 cubic feet uh, per hour of fuel is what I have to run. So that's an important part of that. This one here, this particular little section here, um, when, I, when, I, when I move on to this one, this one here is going to only have to carry 200. And of course, we're gonna get rid of 100 right there when we, after we get through that section, and then we'll be down to the remaining uh, 100. So that means this section here is gonna carry the 100, and then obviously I'll get rid of 50 down for the water heater, and then the remaining one is going to be another 50. This little end cap here, that we don't even worry about. That doesn't even play a role in this, in this process. So let's go back to this. So it basically figured out my total BTUs. I even converted the, um, I even converted the cubic feet that was needed for my natural gas. That's the only time you're gonna have to do this with natural gas. So now I need to figure out, I figured out my longest length. I need to, you know, I know what the volume is. I really now need to just take that length that I figured out and let's identify the table based on my pressure drop 
and we're going to figure out uh, specifically how to do this. So let's go back up to, for example, um, the code book. So I chose, um, in this example, what I did was I chose a pressure drop of the 0.3. Um, my inlet pressure is a normal 7 inch, so that fits into that category. I, I had identified that we were at 76 feet. So in my example here, um, 76, since there's no 76, the, the first one that I have to kind of use in this example here is going to be the 80 foot roll. So that means that I'm going to use that single roll for my entire system. So remember earlier when we looked at our drawing, I had said that I had 250 cubic feet of fuel that I had to run down this system. So the 250 cubic feet of fuel per hour, which I need to operate through this at, at a length of 76 um, feet, with using the 80 foot roll, um, it's pretty much telling me my initial uh, gas pipe going into that building is gonna have to be an inch and a quarter. So because the one, uh, the one inch line, which is more of a typical number, would not work for this. It would only be able to give you 167 cubic feet of fuel and I need 250 cubic feet. So we got a dilemma there. So we're definitely gonna need to go with the bigger size. So going on to this, um, going back to my picture, that pretty much tells me that this pipe right here is gonna to have to be one and one quarter inch. Now, when I move on into this next section, I'm gonna get rid of 50 cubic feet of gas and then, of course, I'm left at 200. Now, if you remember that section that we had addressed earlier when I looked at the code, that we, we can't even think about switching until we get down to 167. So I'm going to go back to this. So that pretty much tells me that this one here is going to have to be 1 and 1 quarter inch as well. And, of course, the next one, we, now we're getting rid of a big one. We get rid of 100,000 100 cubic feet of fuel to that boiler down here. So what's left is the 100. So now let's go back to the table. And in this, in this case, um, we're definitely down at a one inch line there. So I'm gonna go back because obviously this, uh, a one inch line can handle 167. The three quarter would be too, too small. The fact that it would only allow you 89. So we're gonna go with a one inch line in the next one. So I'll go back to the drawing. So that line here is going to be a one inch line, okay? And then of course, um, the remaining two are going to be at 50. So if I go back to my book, you can see that the next two lines are gonna all be three quarters of an inch because they can handle 89 cubic feet. So now I'm gonna move on back to the drawing and I can clearly see that every line here, whoops, I can see that every line here, this line is going to be three quarters of an inch. And uh, that will also be true of the branches. So both of these two branches are going to be three quarters of an inch. This one's going to be three quarters of an inch for that branch that's going to this appliance. This one here is going to be three quarters of an inch going to that appliance. And that, of course, uh, for my 100,000 BTU boiler, I want to look at that one. And that one's going to have to be a one inch that drops down to that appliance. Uh, as you can see, the one inch is going to carry 167. So let me go back to this. So this line right here would have to be a one inch line that drops down to that boiler. Um, from the from the main so you might be wondering uh, possibly like geez you know my what if my appliance happens to have a half inch inlet or a uh, a three-quarter inch inlet so in the case of this boiler that's probably a very likely chance that it might have a, anywhere from a half inch to a three-quarter inch inlet and it's got a one inch pipe going into it so what you primarily do is you you bring the one inch as far as you can and then you just reduce right at the gas valve uh, or just prior to the gas valve and that's typically how that's handled. So that's a little bit of the uh, longest length, um, one look at the longest length piping method.